Trouble is brewing in one of the world's oldest alliances, the United States and much of Europe. Think about this. For the past 70 years, these two parts of the world have stood as allies. But ever since Donald Trump became president more than two years ago, it's become quite clear things are turning sour. Just how bad they have become is increasingly obvious. Trump sees the Europeans as rivals and competitors, not really friends or allies. And in his world of you win, I lose, or I win, you lose, treaties, allies, alliances, cooperation is perhaps only for fools, except in the most transactional of ways. At a recent security conference in Munich, Germany, the relationship was open and angry and confrontational as U.S. Vice President Mike Pence tried to lecture the Europeans in a manner that some saw as self-righteous or undiplomatic, completely tone-deaf to European viewpoints. One German diplomat went so far as to tell the New York Times bluntly, the relationship is broken and, quote, no one any longer believes Trump cares about the views or interests of allies. So what is at stake here? Let's go to Berlin, Germany. On the line is my guest, Jan Tekau. He is with the German Marshall Fund. They are one of the world's leading think tanks. And his area of expertise, European politics, of course, looking at the relationship between Europe and the rest of the world. Jan, thank you so much for coming on the program in Canada. Wonderful to have you. Yes, no, thanks for having me. So what is at stake here? You're there, you're in Berlin, you watch this security conference, you've been looking at this relationship between Europe and the United States. What's happening right now? The answer is actually quite simple. Everything's at stake for the Europeans, quite literally. This is about their security. Um, this is about the question whether the European security architecture that we've known for 70 years can stand. This is about the question whether the United States basically wants to keep its real estate in Europe. And, you know, the Europeans... Um, are under the American security guarantee. Um, they rely on it. They cannot actually guarantee their own security themselves. They need the American security guarantee. And once that becomes brittle and the trust in that guarantee, you know, withers away as it does at the moment, everybody gets quite nervous here. Um, and, uh, and so the, the big question is, you know, can we retain it? Um, can some strategic sense prevail? Or is this European strategic market open, which means that, you know, uh, real estate is looking for new ownership? That would be the worst case for us, and that's why everybody here is so, I mean, literally quite nervous. Yeah, and what about the anger, Jan? Are you seeing that out there in terms of different diplomats who, of course, always behave diplomatically and are very, you know, reluctant to speak out openly about their anger? But what are you hearing and seeing, whether it is in Berlin or Paris or London, you know, these, these major European centers where they're dealing with a president and an administration that they have never had to deal with before in terms of its tone, its attitude, and its policies? Yeah, I, I mean, it's, it's, it's partially anger. It's partially still even two years into the Trump presidency. It's, it's disbelief. But it's also, um, you know, a certain amount of, of, of self-criticism because the Europeans are slowly waking up to the, to the fact that, of course, they have not really um, taken their own security seriously enough. So some of the Trump criticism, you know, that Europeans need to do more, which, by the way, was also the Obama criticism and the Clinton criticism and even the Kennedy criticism, all of that stuff, you know, um, is not unjustified. The Europeans have not really been too serious about it, which means that, you know, in, their, in all of their anger and disbelief, they also have an open flank. So you can feel the anger, um, but you can also, you know, um, you know, you get this message where, where people saying, you know, we really have to do more. And, you know, Trump is, is just a reminder, um, not the first one, but the harshest one, that there is a harsh word out there and that we need to do more. There's something astonishing as well about this this president and, and what he has said, Jan. And, and I read something in The Economist, the British Newsweekly recently, where they said that in the last three, four, five years, spending in Europe on defense has gone up by something like $50 billion or so, which is a staggering amount of money when you think about it. So there has been an impact as the Europeans have been put under pressure by the Trump administration to do more, to spend more on their own defense. Uh, there still continue to be a lot of issues, for example, where you are in Germany not spending 2% of its GDP on its own defense, this kind of thing. But you are seeing more European independence. And so maybe that is a, a positive in all of this? Yeah, that, that is a positive. Uh, and of course, Trump prides himself in having kind of forced the European hand on this and that they finally... 
um, do more. And to an extent, there's some truth in that. But when you actually look at those numbers, and you've just given us the absolute number, the total number, um, and when you uh, keep in mind that this is actually scattered spending, this is spending you know, across Europe, not coordinated spending, not spending that kind of follows one master plan, but it follows 28 master plans. Uh, and when you actually also look at the very sorry state of affairs of most of the European militaries, you know, then all of a sudden that amount of money doesn't look all that great anymore. And, you know, when you actually then compare it to the big strategic situation that we have, where we have a Russia that defines itself against Europe, where you have a China that invests quite heavily in the European market, then all of a sudden all of this stuff, you know, uh, is, is real money. But compared to the size of the problem, it's not really anywhere nearly being sufficient. Jan Tikau is my guest in Berlin, Germany, joining us with his take on the United States and the European Union and the deterioration of relationship between these two over the past two years under President Trump. There are those out there, Jan, perhaps some listening, who will say, well, why should the United States be the guarantor of, of security in Europe? I mean, here you have all of these countries in Europe. They are rich countries. They have their own armies. Why shouldn't they defend themselves? And in other words, why not create sort of a European army? And I know that there has been you know, some move toward that, uh, the Germans and the Dutch working together, the French and the Germans talking about some kind of a European army as well. And yet that makes some people nervous on the other hand. I mean, could we see something like that where Europe does not need the United States anymore? Um, well, there's no doubt that there's, you know, an enormous amount of truth in the argument that the Europeans need to do more and that it needs to be more coordinated, not because they need to please Donald Trump, but because they need to do it for their own security. But the, if, if you ask the question the way that you've just asked it, which means can the Europeans completely replace the American security guarantee, both on the conventional side and on the nuclear side, then my question is that, you know, this is, you know, theoretically possible, but it's, it's, it's not going to be possible realistically within any foreseeable, you know, time frame. So, um, you know, if this continent completely needs to take care of its own um, security, it would have to develop a credible nuclear deterrent. It would have to, um, you know, increase defense spending um, by a ratio that would, you know, create enormous domestic battles over how to spend money, you know, budget battles that we've never seen before. So it would create all kinds of other political turmoil. Um, and, uh, you know, in my opinion, the Europeans will start to do more. Um, but strategically, and this is their big dilemma, um, they will actually have to rely on the United States for some time to come. So if you see the Trump position kind of prevailing in the U.S. even after Trump, uh, that they don't give, you know, much of a damn about Europe any longer, um, then the Europeans face a very uncertain future because even under the best of circumstances, will they not be able to completely replace the U.S. security guarantee? One last thing about the future, and we know the relationship now is at the worst that it has really ever been in 70 years because of this president and what he has said and what his allies have said, including his vice president. Is it possible, Jan, that once Donald Trump is no longer president, could be in two years, could be in six years, we don't know, that the relationship will go back to the way it used to be? Or is this a hard break? In other words, it will never go back to the way it was. I think it will never completely go back to the way it was. Um, that's never possible. In politics, you can never go back to the status quo ante. I think that's, that's one of those golden rules. Um, but what we saw at the Munich Security Conference that you mentioned uh, earlier, you, we saw the largest ever congressional U.S. delegation traveling to that big conference. And, uh, you know, just to send a signal uh, both to the Europeans and to Trump that we in Congress, both in the Senate and in the House, are willing to pick a fight with you over Europe. That's the kind of strategic community, of course, that will stay on, you know, even after Trump goes. Uh, and we all hope over here that, you know, they will be the guarantors of some continuity. But at the same time, we also need to acknowledge that the strategic focus of the United States will move to Asia, that Europe will become a secondary strategic consideration. And so no matter what, whether we see more of Trump or whether Trump goes away in two years, we have to do more for our own security one way or another. Yeah, and wonderful conversation. And thank you for taking a bit of time for us here in Canada to come on the show. Absolutely. My pleasure. Thanks a lot. Jan Tikau was my guest. He is the Europe Program Director at the German Marshall Fund. They are a leading think tank in the world. He was joining us from Berlin, Germany. You are listening to Viewpoints. We'll be right back.